Well, welcome to Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right. It is tea time again. And if you haven't subscribed to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, run over and subscribe to Miss Liz's YouTube. You can watch these tea times at any time in your home, at work, driving in the car, having a picnic. You can watch them whenever it's convenient to you. Uh, before we get started, I just want to give everyone a heads up that George might have to skip out a little early. So we're going to try and get as much as we can out there. If you have any questions or comments or anything that you'd like to put into the tea time today, just put it in Miss Liz's uh, private DMs or in the studio here so I can get those out to George as well. So today I have Dr. George Ackerman here and he's with Together for Sharon. Uh, it's a movement for his mom for Parkinson's disease. So we're, we got a lot of information that we want to get out there. So let's get the disclaimer going and a little bit on George and then we'll get George in here and we'll spill a timely education awareness tea today with you all. Disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz myself is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It's significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer us, offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookymissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Ms. Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect your wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. Again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you see a tea time on Monday or Tuesday, it's a rescheduled tea time. So a little bit now on George. Dr. George Ackerman is from Brooklyn, New York, uh, now residing in Florida. He works in the field of law, police, and education. George lost his mother, Sharon Riff Ackerman, on the first, January 1st, 2020, due to Parkinson's disease. George wanted to honor his mother and continue to help in the Parkinson's awareness cause and did not know how to bring, to ch bring change. With, with his family, he started together for Sharon as a family for the purpose of keeping my mother, Sharon Riff Ackerman's memory alive and to share the message of Parkinson's awareness and hope for a cure. You can find out more at www.togetherforsharon.com. Reaches thousands of individuals across the country for Parkinson's disease awareness. George currently interviews individuals throughout the Parkinson's community, including various foundations, caregivers, and Parkinson's warriors to help to share their stories and causes. So let me get George in here and let's share a good cup of tea with you today. Welcome, George. Thank you for your time and your listeners. I already feel like family because uh, we see each other more online than my uh, real family. So looking forward to it. And by the way, I have to mention, I'm glad it's not called Miss Lee's Coffee Time because I don't drink coffee. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and in this house, George, we don't drink. It's not even about the beverage. It's more about what we serve, right, and the education. And you gave me a really strong to you, gave me timely education awareness. So let's get some of that timely out there because time is short and, and you know, we, we really need to take life and precious, right? Because you just never know what's going to happen. So let's start with who George was as a little guy and who George is now. Sure. Just to mention it is Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month. So it's a great time to have this discussion. 
I'm actually flying to New York City in Central Park on Saturday to the Michael J. Fox Foundation to walk from in memory of my mother. It's called the Unity Walk. It's the 30th anniversary. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, my mother unfortunately passed, like you mentioned, on 1 1 20, uh, 20 due to Parkinson's. She had it for about 15 years, but rewinding and going way back, my mother was an incredible person. She had a master's degree in psychology and was a school teacher, but gave it all up to raise me and my brother. So I knew when it became time that she needed to, someone on her side and to fight for her, I would be uh, honored to be that person. That's when I became her caregiver. Uh, unfortunately, the last four years of her battle, the first several years, she didn't really sh tell us. So I knew what the word Parkinson's was, which many might, but I wasn't aware of you. So that was pretty sad. You know, I don't know if it's because we were told by so many people that you don't die of Parkinson's, you die with it. I don't know how it sped up so quickly, but it is the fastest growing neuro neurological disorder in the world, not just the U.S. So we really need to bring change. And again, I wanted to thank you and your audience for the time because uh, it just means the world to me and my family. George, the one question uh, that I have here is how come there's not enough awareness about females with Parkinson's disease? It's interesting you say that because right now it's a big push to get more out there in the world with uh, females of uh, Parkinson's and also to make sure people are aware is a misconception that it's the elderly man disease, but that's not true. It never really was. It started back many, many decades, centuries ago with the Mr. Dr. Parkinson, who was the first signs of Parkinson's and they actually named the, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing, but the disease was founded and named after him. And uh, for many, many years, they thought it was just an older man who can get it. And again, you don't, uh, it's not an end of life, but that was false. So today we really concentrate on more on females and also things like young onset Parkinson. So people can get it, unfortunately, at age 30, younger. Uh, so Michael J. Fox, the famous actor from Canada, many of you might be aware of, he actually had it in his 30s. So he's still struggling today. I had the honor to meet him a few months ago. And it was kind of an incredible moment, but also deeply sad because when I saw him, he was struggling and it kind of brought me back to you know the time of my mother when she was struggling. And even though I'm 6'2", 200 pounds in law enforcement, I had to go to the bathroom and started falling apart because I just hate what this disease does. And when my mother passed, we were still, I'm still in shock four years later, still grieving. So being with you today in your audience actually still helps me. And uh, you know, just we need to end this disease. And I fight today in her memory, but for all those still struggling and also the caregivers and in memory of all the people we've lost uh, who lost their battle. You know, I always say Parkinson doesn't define a person, but definitely can take a, take a loved one, even if they're still physically there. It's a movement disorder and it can really cripple a person. I know a lot of people who now become family in the Parkinson's community who had to resign their jobs. They my mother, even when she was going through it, she didn't want to burden the family, I believe, but she didn't tell us. So I don't know if we could have known about it earlier, maybe, or maybe she wasn't diagnosed early enough, or maybe I could have done a little more, but you know, you can't have any regrets. And I would have done the same thing today as I did uh, several, four years ago, because there's really nothing left. We tried everything except uh, there's no cure. So George, how did you find out that Tom had Parkinson's? Yeah, well, towards the like for the last four years I took over, but a year before she had trouble in her left arm, so it was very stiff. So for the that year, she had trouble uh, eating out. So we would go out to a restaurant, and we might sometimes we had to help her cut the food, but she never really uh, showed signs that she couldn't live independently. You know, she still lived alone. She did her grocery shopping. She saw her friends. She did her hair. You know, the beautiful female things that I can't get into because I'm a man. But uh, <laughs> so she still lived a nice life. But again, we tried everything. So we tried 15 doctors. We tried this. We tried, you know, chiropractors, massage therapy, uh, active, everything you could dream of. It just didn't work. Uh, finally, she went to a special study. And that night, was the night it changed our lives forever. She came back. I won't say the school or anything because I don't blame the doctors, I blame the disease. But she, uh, I, I was called to her home at 4 a.m. And uh, again, I've never, you can't train or prepare or take a course on this. And she had been moving her furniture out of her home in fear that there were Nazis inside. And I was like in shock because I don't even know what's going on. I, again, I don't, you know, I wasn't trained for that. 
So I found out she had late onset dementia on top of the Parkinson's and that brings hallucinations and delusions. So on top of the Parkinson's, which is, again, Parkinson's brings a few things. Usually uh, in, uh, she had internal tremors, but more external. So you'll see the uncontrollable shaking like Mr. Michael J. Fox has. Uh, also the, the rigidity in the body. So there's actually times where a person might feel like they're frozen. So they literally, they want to move, but they can't. Also the dystonia, dyskinesia, where the toes curl and you know you can't stop it. So those are some of the symptoms. Of course, as it progresses, this individual can lose their voice or they start talking very whisp like whispering. Uh, and then also the stomach, my mother's stomach was another kind of disaster because all the medicines and things really kind of destroyed her body. Uh, you know, they might control the tremors, but then they do other things. And when she passed, we had five huge contractor bags of uh, black, huge garbage bags of medicines that we threw out. And there's no way that that can be, you know, positive or healthy for any human being. So, George, I watching your mom go through this, how was it for you as a man? Yeah, it was very hard. And it's interesting that someone pointed out a few months ago that there's no male caregivers. And I didn't even know that. Like I thought, you know, it's my mother. She's my best friend. She was always there for me. I'm going to be there for her. But, uh, you know, it was definitely a challenge. Uh, I couldn't go into the female areas like the bathroom. And then we had to have staff there kind of to watch over her. I swore I'd never put her in a home. So she was never in a home. She was in her own. But uh, we had people there. And they, imagine a female or anyone living your whole life, like uh, 60, you know, four years. Uh, she passed, unfortunately, at 69, but she always lived alone. So bring in like three people who had to change rotations all day were strangers. So the hallucinations, delusions made her very uncomfortable. She thought that people were harming her. She didn't, she was scared many times who they were. Uh, the good news is I wrote this book just recently, only like a few weeks ago, and it allowed me to go deep down inside of the world of caregiving and also her struggle. I have a little passage, if you don't mind, I can read, but uh, Absolutely. This, yeah, one chapter, I literally wrote a journal and I never shared it with anyone, but I decided it's time and it goes through the last year of her life. So, uh, but on September 14th, 2019, I wrote this, uh, mom may have had a mini stroke. Every time I can think, uh, I think it can't get worse, it does. Six months ago, she was okay. But now daily, she seems to decline more due to this horrible disease. She refuses to get a brain scan, and now I cannot do almost anything without assistance. It's horrifying to see my mother and best friend continually degenerating. So that's, again, just a quick excerpt. But I never did that before. I think it's pretty cool I can do that. <laughs> I didn't have a book right so, and, uh, you know, but the, the sad thing is that, you know, like I said, I could never remember that because part of my brain doesn't want to. So it, definitely a nice reference for me, but the book is, uh, if we get to later, it's very important because it does bring awareness and there are tough times in there, but the end chapters show that there's a light at the tunnel of darkness and good things do come out of it. Uh, again, I lost my mother and best friend, but I've made so many incredible people like you and your audience and all those uh, 1 million still struggling with Parkinson in the U.S. and 10 million throughout the world. And I've interviewed 600 people from Africa, England, France, Spain, Italy, Iceland, and even Nova Scotia. And I could tell you the Parkinson's does not discriminate. It can affect anyone uh, and everywhere. So that's what drives me today is, uh, again, inspiration, seeing other people doing some incredible things. They have one person that climbed Mount Kilimanjaro for Parkinson's awareness. They have boxing, punching for Parkinson's. You have drive tour to cure. So driving for Parkinson's who just had an incredible event and we support them. They had Muhammad Ali's daughter was there. The famous car racer, uh, Shelby was there. James Brown wife was there and Vanessa Williams. So it was a star studded event. And it's just beautiful that these individuals and celebrities are also uh, becoming aware. And unfortunately some of them have been touched by Parkinson's, their family, the fathers and, uh, I had the lucky opportunity to meet Michael J. Fox, like I said earlier, but also uh, Kenny G was my mother's favorite musician, the saxophone player. He actually did a song and wrote a message or played a message from my mother. It's on the website. I also had Jack Osborne because Ozzy Osborne's struggling today with Parkinson's. He gave us a message and also uh, interviewed Muhammad Ali's daughter. So there's a lot of people that, you know, are becoming aware more and more now. And I don't know if it's because of our work or that the unfortunate, again, I hate saying unfortunate, but it is 
that uh, the disease is just growing more and more. Oh, I, I never knew that Ozzy Osbourne had Parkinson's. So when, how did you find that out, George? I mean, it's kind of been spoken a little bit about. He mentioned it, but he's not doing well. Uh, oddly enough, I actually reached out to a few people, and one of them was Richard Lewis, the famous comedian who li literally just passed away due to Parkinson's a few months ago. I had been speaking to his agent to interview him, and they said right at that moment he's busy, but maybe in the future. And then I, to my shock, I put the news on, and there you go. It said Richard Lewis, famous comedian from Kirby Enthusiasm and some incredible stand-up comedy, just passed away, and I was shocked because I didn't. So obviously they didn't want to share. Uh, you know, it's, again, that's why uh, Michael J. Fox is my hero because he could have kind of went quietly away and did his own life, but he didn't. He fought back. He advocates, and he still fights today. He's raised over two billion, not million, two billion dollars for research. And just last year, they had a groundbreaking uh, change in science. It's called a biomarker. And now for the first time ever in history, there's a way to have a needle, which isn't exciting in your spine, but it, it might be able to determine if you have Parkinson's. So now that's great because it helps early diagnosis. It doesn't cure it, but at least seeing, you know, some uh, groundbreaking research is important because, you know, we always see all the, you know, we're donating, we're fundraising, but where is it all going? So that's really good news. And the other thing that's very important, which you and your audience can actually join in if you're in the U.S., the National Plan to End Parkinson's Disease passed last December, the first bill in U.S. history, which is kind of sad, in my opinion, that this is the first time we have a bill, uh, but it's going to provide federal funding for research, for those diagnosed, for awareness, and it's uh, now heading to the Senate. And I had the opportunity to uh, I interviewed United States Senator Rick Scott a few weeks ago, it's on my website under the podcast, and it was really an honor to speak to him because they're very busy. And just in fact that he's spearheading this with the Michael J. Fox Foundation and even gave us a little time to talk about it, you know, meant the world. So every this is the first time if we meet again, like in a year or two, hopefully it'll already pass and we won't be able to tell your audience you can actually be a part of it, but you can right now. So please reach out to your U.S. senator, tell them you want them and tell them, demand them to urgently uh, support the national plan to end Parkinson's disease because it'll change the world for so many. So is that part of the National Plan to End Parkinson's Act? That is it, yeah. And actually, I, heard, I had found that on your website, George. Yeah, it actually mirrors, the, uh, again, Alzheimer's is even more devastating in a way, not to the people of Parkinson, but it uh, reaches more people in the world. And we had, uh, I was told that the National Plan for Parkinson to end it kind of mirrored the Alzheimer's. So they're leading the way. And we're trying to also get some attention. And it's very important that this passes. Plus, I hope if it passes in the U.S. that other countries will take it as a boilerplate like plan, pass it in their country. Because I had the opportunity to speak to Parkinson's UK and uh, Parkinson's Africa. I mean, it even touches, you know, individuals in Africa where they actually think there's a misconception that Parkinson's disease is witchcraft, which is shocking because it's not. So, that you know, we have a lot of work still to do. And. This is just the groundbreaking, you know, time for the national plan. Wow, right? I'm, I'm so glad that you're here today and you're giving this information out there because I think it's deeply important that somebody who has lived it and, and, and a caregiver of somebody who has gone through it brings the best education to the table, you know, yeah. because you actually experienced it. Uh, I want to talk about the book a little bit, George, because the book is called The Son's Journey. So it's your journey. So as somebody who had seen his mom go through this and not see female advocates out there, because I, I don't see any spokesperson for a female. Are, are you looking to make your mom that spokesperson? Yeah, I mean, I, I do everything in her memory. I want to, uh, now she would be more the person kind of, you know, that again, everything I do is geared around her, but there are people, unfortunately, again, uh, with Parkinson's who are female and they are spearheading more about it. There is a, I believe the women's pro uh, Brain Project is one organization, and it's not easy. I mean, I definitely interviewed a lot of in females with Parkinson's, females who are uh, caregivers, and also females, unfortunately, who pass. I have to stop saying unfortunately, but this is all not, you know, it's unfortunate. But it's, uh, so I have been able to shed some light. That's why I decided two years ago, uh, it's not just about my mother and I, it's about everybody, and we're all family in this fight, including all of you. And if we even reach just one person today together, then we've changed the world for the better. 
that I, that's why I decided to go on that mission of 600 and interview people because I feel there's so many inspiring people, but people just aren't aware. So every morning I wake up, if you go to togetherforshawn.com, click interviews, everything's completely free. I did it all free. It was not easy, obviously, and I, I don't, we don't accept money. So if anyone wants to donate to these organizations, you can go to our site, click donation. And the most amazing thing is uh, we support a lot of organizations, but for example, you can donate to Michael J. Fox Foundation and they created a link in my mother's memory that all the proceeds go to them. So we don't take a penny. Like if you send me a penny, I'll send it back to you, <laughs> even though that might cost a lot. <laughs> no, not, that's not why we're in this. Even the book, I, I don't make anything because we spent a lot just making sure it's good and things. But the book means a lot to me. Uh, even looking at the cover sometimes tough because I was uh, the mother and son dance at my wedding, one of my most favorite days in my life. And that was like three minutes of our life where Parkinson's disease didn't exist really. My mother and I talked, we laughed, we joked, and you can see her shining in a way like laughing and it was just like in that moment it was like a movie where nothing else existed and i wish sometimes hard to talk about it, even the cover because i wish we could go back to that but that was you know just unfortunately our scenario she always used to say is she going to be here for my daughter's uh, wedding and all these things and i could never tell her because i didn't know so it was just very very difficult so george on your wedding day did your mom was your mom diagnosed with parkinson's then yeah, she had it. It just didn't decline as quickly, but it wasn't easy for her to, you know, uh, like dance and thing. But she did. Uh, my cousin actually got married later on, and she you could see more of the progression where she couldn't dance anymore. And I stayed with her at the table a lot of the wedding, but she still was grateful that she was able to be there. I do remember one scenario, which I think I wrote in the book. My daughter was seven at the time. Now she's about 11 or 12, 11. And uh, there was one day towards the last year, my mother was not doing well. And we rented this little teeny cute place for little girls. It was only girl invite only. And they all did makeup and did a little walk on the dance. Like they have like a little walkway. It's cute. I forgot the name of it. But that was one day that my mother would have like just loved and she wasn't able to be there. And that was, uh, again, heartbreaking for me because I didn't, I was struggling too as caregiver. You know, do I be with my mother? Or do I be with my family, my daughter? And, it was like an ongoing struggle. So it wasn't just Parkinson's effects. It wasn't just the dementia. It wasn't just dealing with caregivers, which is another chapter of a mess. So that was very hard and frustrating. And then on top of all that, my own health kind of suffered, my own family. Thankfully, I had my wife and children who supported me even today. So it's kind of an interesting shift from caregiver to even today advocate. As you know, I'm just going, going, going. I have, you know, I still am a professor. I work around the country. And uh, I'm unfortunately having a major back, third back surgery. That's a different tea talk. <laughs> uh, but that's, uh, so, you know, I don't want to miss our talk because this is important to me. And again, like, uh, I feel like we're family because we see each other so much online, which is incredible. So the nice thing is with virtual, you get to do these things, which is a, just incredible. I love it. But then also, because it's Parkinson's Awareness Month, I kind of went a little overboard. But this month, we've actually been live. We were at the Michael J. Fox IQ event, which is for the community, at the end of last month. And the beginning of the month, we were at Parkinson's Foundation Walk. And we actually were on TV, which was really uh, cool. <laughs> and then we uh, went to the American Parkinson's Disease Association Symposium. And I got to speak to some incredible people in the community. And now we're uh, flying to the Unity Walk. So this will kind of conclude. They don't really do a lot of live things. It just happened to be this month, uh, uh, but it was a lot. I mean, I loved every moment, kind of, you know, definitely as an advocate burnt, but every time I'm tired or I feel pain in my back, I think about all those people struggling and the families and all those we've lost. And I even filmed a video, if you saw a few weeks ago, where I'm laying down, almost crying and back pain. And, on the video, I just get up and keep fighting because there's no, my back pain is one thing, but I can live and still do some of things, but people who have Parkinson's, unfortunately, they can't. So I'm going to keep fighting in my mother's memory and all those who we've lost until we find a cure for those still fighting and for the future. They don't know why you get Parkinson's or how. It's not supposedly genetic, but we don't know. I do think, and I agree with a lot of the experts, that it's environment. So the water we drink, the pesticides they put on the fruit at our grocery stores. I was shocked to find out the other day that even the cleaners, they use these horrible sprays. So I was interviewing a doctor, an expert, and 
he was telling me that while I had a suit. And I was like, literally the whole interview, I didn't know how to say it. I wanted to throw the suit on the floor and burn it. So, you know, but it's, uh, it's fun, but it's sad because all this stuff, like, the government needs to get involved. They don't, there's something called Paraguay, which is banned in China, but not in the U.S. It's poison and it can cause Parkinson's. And also people are probably tired of it, but you might have seen the ads for Camp Lejeune. Uh, there was a famous military base where families and those in the military were getting Parkinson's and other diseases. They think that the water was contaminated. So the government can really step in, but they're not going to do that unless we all take a stand and we unite. And the great thing is that even the national plan and all this to end the, to end the disease is bipartisan. And as you probably are well aware, nothing today is <laughs> yeah, nothing we can't all agree on, which is pretty frightening. But this, I hope we can. George, we have a couple questions here, and you you got into a little bit of it, but I want to get these questions out there for you. Uh, is can can you get Parkinson's because your mom had Parkinson's? Yeah, that's a great question. Again, they don't think it's genetic, so I can't say for hundred percent sure. I mean, I hope I don't. I know people who have family that don't have it, but then I've interviewed people who have generations of family who have it. So I would say no, but it is a weird thing. Like right now. I don't have Parkinson's. I'm no longer a caregiver of someone alive with it. And I'm actually finished my second book, which will probably wait a few years to put out because I need a break. But it's actually, this one was based around my mother's memory and also for those diagnosed and to see the journey. But I often am forgotten, in my opinion, because I'm part of the representation of all the loved ones still out there, but lost their family member due to PD. And there's probably 10 million or more people like that. But a lot of people like you, I'm sure you're aware, they just kind of, you know, move on and they have to get back to life. I wasn't brought up like that. I was brought up to keep fighting. And I feel like my mother lost 15 years of her life and then 15 after. And I don't feel that it's time to, you know, just kind of throw in the towel. I don't want anyone to have to go through what we did. And that's why I keep fighting. And the next book I might be naming A Seat at the Table because no longer do we have a seat at the table for my mother due to Parkinson's. And many days I feel like I don't have a seat at this conversation because uh, we have, the, I have a lot of examples. I won't get into it, but there was once an organization, again, I don't name them, but I got an email from them. I'm so excited. It said, apply here, write three pages, a like structured essay. And, and my professor background in research, I had APA format. I was really into it. I had video, everything. And then I went to, uh, so they, they want you to, you know, apply to be on some kind of like, you know, on their organization. I won't get too many details. So I wrote this beautiful three-page thing. I'm so proud of it. And I figured I'm not going to get it, but that's fine. I didn't want it. If I can't get it, at least I'll know someone like me is out there. So I was all done, excited, ready to submit it. And guess what? There are only two buttons. One says you have Parkinson. Button two or B was uh, you're currently a caregiver of someone alive. Well, where's C? So there he goes. Uh, and that kind of upset me. So I know one week I knocked out a 200 page book on it. It also followed all the experience I had the day I became an advocate. Cause as you know, I'm sure too, some of the social media is not the easiest thing. I mean, I, I needed help. I felt alone. I went to Facebook groups. I found a lot of hateful people, which is sad. Uh, and I write about that. And, you know, I, one lesson I learned is no matter what some stranger or even someone, you know, says you always have to do what's in your heart and you have to keep fighting. So, I've come such a long way from that day. Like, you know, we had together for Sharon then four years ago, we thought three people would see it. And now today we've had over 40,000 people. So it's just been a, a incredible, but we still have so much more work to do. So George, is there any testing that they can do on you to find out if you are, that you have a chance of getting it? Uh, the newest breakthrough was that biomarker we mentioned earlier. So they do have a needle, but it's very evasive. And if you don't want a needle on your spine, I don't think that's the way. So what they're trying to do is turn that into a simple minor blood test like we have for any time you go into every doctor's office. So that's something that is exciting. But right now, if you go to the doctor, there's no test for Parkinson's. What they do is they'll do several other tests like neurological. So you have to see, a, and again, I'm not a doctor in medicine, I'm only a professor. So uh, criminal justice and in, uh, in law enforcement and law, I only talk about my experience. That's why I like your disclaimer because I'm an attorney, so I commend you for that. <laughs> but uh, so you go to movement specialists, neurologists, and they do several tests for other things. And then if you don't have those things, it's Parkinson's, which is not the most effective thing. So there are people still today as we sit here talk that are being misdiagnosed, people being late 
late diagnosed or not diagnosed at all. And that's an epidemic because the only way we can help people uh, slow the progression is to properly, uh, you know, find out what they have. And that is the only good news is you might not, you know, and I have a cure yet, but we do, uh, you can slow the progression. For me and my mother, it was too late, I guess, because we just, that's what it was. But things now, like 45 minutes of exercise a day, eating healthy, uh, but exercise number one can definitely slow the progression of this disease. So those are the biggest things. And like I said, they have ballet for Parkinson. They have uh, yoga for Parkinson. They have Tai Chi for, I mean, they have like everything. But what I, what I love about together for Sharon.com, even though I'm the one, it's just me, like we're not a foundation. I always have to tell people it's just me because I don't want people to think where this is. People come to me and they say, uh, how do you do all this? You're a mega organ. I'm like, I, no, I, I totally get that, George, because a lot of people, I, I, I totally get that because a lot of people think Miss Liz has a big team, sir. So I'm a one person team. I do everything. I do all the marketing. I do all the booking. I do everything, uh, you know, and it can get overwhelming sometimes. And especially being a caregiver, you, you didn't have that break, right? Because it was taking care of mom all the time. So what did you do, George, for yourself during that time? Because uh, for all the other caregivers out there, we, we don't talk about the caregivers. Is there any support groups out there? Is there any organizations that you guys can reach out to for support for yourself as well? If you go to togetherfisherand.com, you'll see under Parkinson's and there's even section for dementia, Alzheimer's, it's all different uh, organizations out there around the world. So not just in the U.S. that you can look up and they're all in one place. now. You don't have to go kind of uh, the Wild West, you know, on Google and look it up. So we do list it all. I didn't think there was enough for people like me who lost a loved one. So we actually teamed up with a group called PSP Awareness in Canada we offer once a month completely free, confidential, it's not recorded or anything, uh, a support group for anyone who lost a loved one due to any disease. And that's, uh, you can find that on the website under About Me. And that's been incredible because now I get to sit with people virtually on Zoom and we get to talk about our stories and share. So that's an incredible one way. Uh, but the uh, main thing is exercise again. I mean, I was a big sports person, uh, personal training, runner, and basketball player. And, and I remember in the book, I wrote one Sunday, it was like my, my life every Sunday, I had a group of 50 guys who would just play. And unfortunately, everyone gets hurt. <laughs> but you know, still you forget the world for an hour or two. And I remember putting, I had broken both legs, but ankles before and on like ankles. And so it takes me like a half hour to get ready. And I put all the you know gear on, I'm all excited. And my mother called and it's in the book that she's scared and she's worried and confused. So. I had to drop everything and rushed over. And those were the days that were tough because, you know, you, you have a balancing, like the scales of justice, you know, do you go take care of your mother? Well, the reason I did that, which I don't recommend, is because we never knew she would pass at such a young age of 69. So I was always thinking in my head, you got to be there for her. We don't know how long this is going to go. We don't know if she'll be okay. I don't ever want to regret it. So the I'm kind of telling you what I didn't do. And even now today as an advocate, you're not supposed to do what we do because me and you are on the lot. But we, I still feel that even if it's my own health, I'm still trying to bring change, trying to bring awareness. And if I skip today, let's say we had to cancel, I feel like we might have let one person in the world down. And my main message today is, again, I don't want money. We don't want anything. We just want everyone to know they're never alone. And I feel that we're, and I have a little, quote I say at the end if I have if you let me but I feel like even together our voices are just so much stronger and uh, you know I can only reach so many people but with Mrs. Liz together we can reach so many and then when we see everyone out there listening shares this and I'm going to put on my website and share we, we can reach like a millions of people so it's not that hard and no one has to pay anything it doesn't even take any time to press the share button like I share all your stuff all the time it's just a quick even to your story don't share it everywhere but you don't have to tag anyone or any of that stuff, which is, you know, the big thing, but I just think it's hard. So again, as a caregiver and as an advocate, you have to take a little time for yourself with your family, but I can't really tell other people in their situation because everyone's journey is, you know, so different. And today the only journey that breaks my heart are the ones I'm not aware of because there's still people out there. Just take one quick example. Just yesterday I spoke to a couple who actually both had DBS surgery, that's deep brain stimulation. It's for Parkinson's to control the tremors. And they're actually, they're gonna be, they're getting married, but they both had it. So it's like a beautiful story of two people fell in love. They still have to battle Parkinson's, but they're doing it together. And 
I've been talking to them for a year and we just haven't been able to connect. And I finally called them. We had a beautiful talk. I'm going to be doing a show. They're going to come on our podcast and we're going to just talk. And it's like, those are the journeys and uh, that inspire me to keep fighting. Cause I didn't even know about that. And it's, it might be rare, but people would love to hear a beautiful love story uh, even through, you know, this fight. So George, we have a question here about your book. Do you want to make your book into a movie one day? I mean, that would be amazing. I don't know how that works. I was lucky enough to get it on Amazon. It's on uh, Ingram Spark hardcover now, and also the ebook is out. We also finally did an audio version, which is from a professional broadcaster. I don't want my voice on. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I actually thought about that once, and I don't know how to do it. If someone ever sees me and hears our story, I think it would be an incredible thing. And they're, they are making more movies. I remember there was recently a movie out there, I forgot who the actors were, but they were fighting on the scene about Parkinson's and how the female actor was struggling and the male was, didn't understand. And even Harrison Ford was recently a psychologist in a TV show and he had Parkinson's, uh, just a lot more Parkinson's coming up. Michael J. Fox had the movie, I believe it's Touch, I think, uh, or if you look it up on Apple TV, it's out there. Uh, and it's, uh, it was last year, and that was an incredible move. First one ever, really, to concentrate on Parkinson's awareness. So if someone's out there listening and would like to, I would love to. I just don't, you know, I wouldn't know. I don't have the resources. So. And we have a comment here. Uh, advocates seem to forget that they need to take care of themselves as well. Uh, as an advocate myself for a lot of uh, things uh, that I've dealt with in my life, uh, George, as, as advocates, sometimes we do a lot, right? And we yeah. seem to forget that that time is taken from us as well. And our family too looks at us and say, okay, you want to be the advocate, but we also want you here and present. Have you ever had that with your family where they're just like, dad, I want you right now. Uh, can we take a break? Has anybody ever said that to you, George? Yeah, I mean, it was hard because I kind of helped my mother and took care of her on my own. I have a brother, but he wasn't able to help as much. Uh, my mother was single, divorced, so my father wasn't really there except for the phone and my wife was amazing you know my wife was incredible because she did bring and we have a, our own podcast now it's called the together for sharon podcast i have two of them together for sharon podcast is and again they're all free to listen to is actually my wife and i and we only do it once a month because she's busy with our three kids but it's very interesting because it's a female perspective of caregiving too and people love it so those are uh, and then i have q a with sharon's son george that's where I go one on one with people. I do. I'm doing way too many of those. Like we're doing every week seems to be, and I can't. I don't know how you do it, but it's not. I love doing it, and I'm, but I'm afterwards. I'm kind of laying on the floor. I'm like, you know, it's draining because you want to. It is tiring. It, it, it is. Hard, you know, hard is uh, making sure you press record for me. <laughs> you know, and that's one thing. If I had an opportunity, if I ever look back and had ten years ago, I wish I had a. We didn't have the technology then. I wish I had a podcast with my mother before Parkinson's because now today I don't really have as many memories with her. Thankfully, her sister is still with us and she helped me a lot on the book because I don't have a lot of my mother's you know, history. Thankfully, again, it's in the book and I have it forever. But I wish I had a show about just life with my mother. I would have I could have watched it now. I could have shared it. That's my literal. Own, own, someone asked me that question. That's the only regret. It kind of keeps me up some nights about because I wish I had that. Again, not during Parkinson's. I'm talking about, you know, much earlier, but we didn't have all this technology. I don't even, can't believe I still have a show or anyone would even want to watch it. So, you know, it's, uh, that's one thing I wish I had done. So, George, do you have any videos of your mom with her voice, with her speaking? Uh, I mean, we have videos. If you follow me, if you go to actually, and you have it up there, which I love. I don't even know how I got a link tree, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. You can go to Together for Sharon, click go a little lower on the front page of the Christmas tree, you click it. You can follow me on every social media and I will follow you all right back because I want to, we're a family in this. So I love uh, sharing, I, like we've added each other everywhere. But I think it's uh, important that I, unfortunately, it stinks. I hate saying the word. I'm going to have to hit myself saying it, but I don't have as many videos as I like. The last year I videotaped, took pictures and kept my journal. I don't share that year with uh, anyone because I don't want her to be remembered for that. So I won't share those. But so before the last year we had, you know, the, the last three years were tough. We have some videos I do share on all my social media. Sometimes I kind of repop them up, but I don't have a lot. Uh, we have like, you know, have birthdays. We have one Q1 was a memory and like uh, New Year's Eve. My mother was so happy. She was kind of hitting the 
uh, bongos and we were playing and dancing. So that was cute, but I'm, I don't have as many as I wish I did. So. Before you jump out, George, I want to talk about the bands because you have this band for your mom. Uh, yeah. So can anybody get those bands? Hey, we actually hand them out. I um, probably won't hand them out this week, but they just say in memory of my mother, Sharon, inside. And then it says for Parkinson's disease awareness. This is a long story in the book, too. It's uh, So my mother passed away out of nowhere. Like We weren't we were in shock. It was literally on New Year's. So we didn't know what to do. We decided I like to give people something just to remember. So I made these little bands. I thought we'd have like three or four again. There were like 50, a lot of people showed up. It was beautiful at her funeral. And I gave a speech, which I have online. And I was like, I speak a lot, but that was the toughest. I don't even know how I got through it. And I spoke about our life and everything. And it's out there. But uh, so I decided I want to give everyone who attended something. So I gave them all the band. And I thought that would be the end of it. Well, at the time, I was my brother-in-law. But my sister-in-law's uh, boyfriend at the time, I don't know why he did it, but he put the band on. He took a picture of his hand and his arm, and he wasn't in it. So imagine I'm not here. But so I, in my brain as a cop and lawyer, I was thinking, wow, that's pretty interesting. Like he has the band and has his hand in a background, and he's not in it. And I thought that's an interesting concept because people don't really want their face all over media because we have privacy and this, who knows who's out there. So I decided, why don't I do that? So I, it, it kind of went viral. So I started taking pictures of Disney World, the basketball court, I mean, outside in the wood, you know, the woods, the beach, and it was just so people knew my mother was always still with us. Then all of a sudden, somehow, I don't know if you know Willie Geist from NBC, his father has Parkinson, but his wife saw it and she talked about it on her Instagram. Then another person, and it and went viral. Like we had like probably 10,000 people throughout the world wearing them. So it was amazing. It was a great experience. We had to stop it just because it was, I paid for everything. Like it wasn't a lot of the stuff too that I could see. I could probably write a chapter. It's extremely, extremely expensive. Again, we don't, we do this all voluntary and I don't accept money, which is why I do it because I do want to help. But I mean, we probably spent like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in the last four years on this stuff and gotten, you know, but when I see a person who uh, sometimes like we'll do live events, we do give them out for free at the live events. I'll have, I'm in the middle of two pharmaceutical companies and they're all selling stuff. So sometimes people will walk by and they're kind of timid. They don't want to, they think we're selling something. Then they, when they come a little closer and see the banner, my mother and me, and they learn about what we're doing, they cry, they hug us and we cry. And that's what inspires me to keep going. Cause as long as there's people like that out there that don't want to feel alone and don't want to think that no one's out there fighting, then I'm going to keep fighting. So that's the mission forward and that's my dream is someday to really stop this all like i love to go back to my life but a part of my even my wife sometimes she's a huge supporter but she struggles sometimes because she wants to see me and like i'll be on with you and then another show another and i don't even work out much anymore and now we're going flying literally for a day which is a little crazy but for one day we're flying to new york going to the unity walk flying right back there's a lot of money and time but again i think you have to sacrifice things in life and I want, to, I want my mother to still be remembered because it wasn't her fault. She got Parkinson's. It wasn't her fault that uh, she lost the battle. And I feel that our voices still matter and she still means the world to me. So until, again, we find a cure, I'm going to keep fighting. So, George, we have one question here. How old was your mom when she was diagnosed? Because you said she passed uh, at 69. So how, how long from her diagnosis to her passing? The one area I'm not good is math, so we'll have if you have a calculator. <laughs> she had it for 15 years, and she, whatever, 15 minus uh, 2020, so 15 years before, so approximately. Okay. But uh, again, that's when I believe she, you know, would die. Uh, she's not here, so I can't get. But we think that she had it for about 15 years, so. 69 minus 15 is your answer. I can't do the math. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 54 or 55. I, I don't I don't have the calculator right here, but no, I just want to know because you said it happened so fast, right? So, um, yeah, the but she, progression is what happened. Like she had it for several years and it was, you can live with it and she was able to, if she didn't tell us. So I don't know if I could have forced her to do, and you can't force people, but I could have, you know, worked out with her. I did, we had a whole room for her for exercise and she would do it like the thing, the one like this and the bike. But she went from walking three miles every week to uh, you know, the last four years, she went to a cane for two years. After the cane, the walker for a year, 
and then the walker to a wheelchair, and then finally bedbound for the last seven days. And we don't have the time, but the last seven days are in the book. That was the worst time of my life where she had a heartbeat, but she wasn't alive anymore. So in Florida, we don't have the Death with Dignity Act. We treat our, I love my animals, but we treat animals better than people, which is pretty pathetic. Uh, hopefully they'll pass that they're working on this year. Um, but they don't also recognize Parkinson's as the end of life, which is wrong. And some people still don't think you could die of Parkinson's. Well, I could tell you my mother had no other medical issues at all. So she might not have died of Parkinson's, but she definitely died due to all the harsh medicines and maybe all the uh, you know after effects of all the things from dementia and the medicines and medicines and medicines. So I have no argument if someone doesn't believe that someone didn't die of Parkinson's, they die with it. I'm not here to have arguments or conjure. I just want to share our journey and I could tell you again medically that she didn't have any other issues. She did have like fibromyalgia, which was terrible for pain in the back, but that's not Parkinson's. And if she just had fibromyalgia, she would be a little bit sad because of pain, but she'd still be with us. So, you know, that's just, again, our journey. But these questions are great. I love them all. <laughs> so what, what final message would you like to leave everybody with today, George? Sure. Yeah, I mean, the big thing, and this is to you and your audience, uh, we love you. We support you. We care a lot about you, and you're never alone. I will advocate along with Miss Liz for you, and together our voices are so much stronger. And I'm always, uh, I always say I'm just getting started because even though we've been doing it a little while, every time again I see, I mean, someone like you is incredible, your audience, these amazing questions. Uh, I could stay, could stay 24 hours and you won't want me again. <laughs> uh, but every time I, you all inspire me and people fighting you know, battling inspire me. The people I actually just started quickly three new sections on together. I'm always trying to innovate and help people. We just started a section called In Memory. And those, that's literally for people who lost a loved one due to Parkinson's. And it's not easy. So if you're out there, please reach out. My other interviews are 600 advocates fighting. And that was easy. I had a lot of a pool of people. But this one's hard because the person passed and the loved ones are very difficult to find. But I have interviewed several, and they're going to be in the next book, with, interwoven in my uh, writing. Uh, I even have a picture of Janet Reno, who is uh, Attorney General. She had Parkinson's. I met her many years ago. So that was one of the examples. Then also I started a section for authors. So anyone who has a book with Parkinson, and I started a section where you can look at other people's books and just to get awareness out there. And the other one I'm very proud of is uh, it's called PWP. It means par people with Parkinson's. So I have a little section now. And it, if you're out there and you have Parkinson's and you have a talent like an artist or uh, create shirts or anything, a musician, I want, I'm trying to find a way where people with Parkinson's can try to fundraise for themselves and gain the money 100%. So we don't take a penny again. But I want people to be able to pay for their medicines because right now we don't have the national plan. And people struggle like just to get medicine. That's not fair. It shouldn't be like that. And again, I love the big organizations, but they might not like if I say it. They're incredible, but I can't tell you for sure. I know at least in our situation, if like, let's say you donate, we've done it $15,000. I don't know if any of that's going to go specifically to the little guy or the little girl. But I wanted to think of a way, and that's been working for people who have Parkinson's. Could send me two sentences, a link, and boom, there it's going to be right up there for free. Anyone can contact the person. They can leave me. I'm just the mediator. And then, you know, maybe they can buy a shirt. And one person, was, his name is Stephen. I love him. But he actually made this mug. See, it's my mother and me. And we made up every journey matters and together. And he actually, uh, I pay this for myself. But he, he sells these on our website. And if you buy them, they're not expensive. And he gets everything fully. And he uses that money to pay for his uh, medicines. He was an, an incredible person. He's, uh, he's on all the social media. It's called Parkins Shirts, Park. P-A-R-K-N shirts. He was, his health and the passion in life was he was a truck driver. And unfortunately he had to stop. So he lost his whole love and his life. Now he started a little business, but he doesn't, it's hard because, you know, he just makes shirts. So it's not easy. So I, if anything I could do for him, anyone out there, please reach out. That's why I'm doing this for you. And I don't want anything in return, but for everyone to know they're never alone. Thank you. So, George, if anybody wanted to reach out to you to have them on their podcast or on their uh, platforms or radio or whatever, how could they reach you? 
Yeah, if you go to togetherthesharon.com, you can contact us. We now have a newsletter, which is just me. It's not like, it looks cool. It's kind of like, I feel like I'm that guy in Wizard of Oz behind the sheet, you know, because it's just me. But it, it looks like it's not just me, which is nice. It's kind of getting, even the website is so expensive. So, uh, you know, but it's still uh, up and it's out, but they can reach me through the website or any social media. I try my best to respond. This weekend I'll be busy, but second I'm back, I'll be right back at it. And uh, again, it's just an honor to be able to have the time with you today. And uh, again, we consider you family and your listeners, and they're always looking for new journeys to share. Uh, I have one thing: the 600 interviews are up there. Those are more written, so you don't. We don't even have to talk. I usually send it to the person. They send a photo and back. I put it in and take care of the rest. Podcasts are great, but I'm already booked till 2025. I don't know how that happened. I kind of did way too many too. It's like two or this too much. And I pay a fee every time, like you probably to get it to the editor and things. So this is going to be a tough year, but I, I'd rather do like one a month someday, <laughs> but it's just there's so many people I want to talk to and get to know. The other day I spoke to a gentleman named Eric and he started Peloton for Parkinson's. And I think that's incredible. Like imagine I didn't, I don't know. I can't even spell Peloton. We laughed because he can't either. And he's in charge, but uh, you know, people out there love Peloton. So why not do it for a cause? You know, some bicycles for Parkinson's, just pedaling for Parkinson's, so many things out there. Just people aren't aware. And hopefully today, even one more person now will Well, I think it's really deeply important that you came to the table because we need stories like yours, George, to get that awareness out there. Uh, If anybody would like to get the book, I know that you have to rush out because you have some things that you're dealing with. Uh, So if anybody wanted to grab the book, George, where could they get the book? Yeah, it's actually, if you go to togetherfishhound.com now, it's actually under, I think you go to About Us and you can literally learn about the book. We have some amazing endorsements from like expert doctors. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but some of the biggest doctors in the world of Parkinson's from the U.S. and out who actually wrote a few notes on it. And it's out there. It's an ebook. I think it's only $10. The, the uh, uh, soft cover's out there and the hard cover, I just ordered. I had to pay for my own book. They don't even give you. <laughs> yeah, you have to pay for your books. <laughs> I know because I have three back there. I always have to buy them. <laughs> yeah, and hopefully the, the uh, audio book, that'll be exciting, will come soon, a uh, few weeks. And then I'm already on to the next. We actually have four of the books of the interviews coming next. So I don't know how I'm going to do it, but we're going to take all 600 interviews and release them in book form. Then I'm writing a kid's book because I had trouble. We didn't even get to it, but my children just struggled to understand what Parkinson's was. So we're doing a kid children's book. I also have the follow-up to this book, which is going to be controversial. So that might be my last book. <laughs> so no one will want to talk, but that one's going to kind of, my goal is not to start fights, but to break the doors open and to bring people, even the big organizations, I want them to have a, they have no section for people who lost a loved one to Parkinson's. And that's my message. They need to, and then I'm actually doing a groundbreaking one, which I'm hoping might be able to change the law. And because I'm in law enforcement, I actually have it here. I shouldn't talk about it because it's gonna, this is actually a piece of the, the police academy in Florida, the book, like the training. And right now as a police officer and trainees, if you read in the training, it talks about dementia and Alzheimer's, but it doesn't even mention Parkinson's. So my dream is to write a book on Parkinson's and policing because Parkinson's is a motor disorder. So guess what? At 5 a.m. or 2 a.m. or dark somewhere late at night, somebody's driving and they have Parkinson's and they just have a bad reaction, didn't take their medicines, they start shaking uncontrollably. Police pull you over. That's not going to end good. And you, as you know, and I'm not doing this book. A con- this one won't be controversial. This is more of an awareness. I want the police involved. I mean, it's more of a positive one, but I want them to add Parkinson's to all the academies in the United States. Michael J. Fox Foundation did mention if I can get the book out, they may help me sponsor a bill through the United States Congress and the Senate uh, to change how policing looks at Parkinson. Because again, in that one moment, if an officer opens the door and the person's shaking, they don't know if they're drugs, uh, out, you know, who knows, the DUI, and it can end very bad when all we needed to do would be aware. So that's a very epic, important book personally to me that hopefully this summer I'll be able to to start writing. Well, and I think it's really deeply important that you get it out there, you know, because when people hear Parkinson's is, uh, d- disease, we, we only hear of Michael J. Fox, right? Everyone thinks of Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox has lived with this for so long. And a lot of people still to this day don't even know what Parkinson's is. 
You know, right. they, they just see Michael J. Fox's face, but they don't understand the disorder. Yeah. And I think what you're doing, George, is amazing because you're bringing a lot of resources. You're bringing a lot of education to the table. And you're saying, you know what, we need policies. We need acts. We need awareness. We need the education. Uh, have you talked about getting into schools and all of that as well? To Because like you said, your children struggled with it. They didn't know how to or what it was about. So how do we educate these children on Parkinson's? Hopefully the kids book, which is almost, it's like done. I just looking at illustrators, maybe that can help. But the problem is still with Parkinson's. It's uh, if there's only a million people in the U S affected by it. That, and we have, that's not a lot of people in the U S but it's so it's one of the fastest growing diseases, neurological. So more now I'm finding more people are not just getting it, but the neighbors are the mailman, the friend and this and that, but we're getting aware like that. And I don't want to be aware like that. I was shocked to find out or learn that, there's no other person, again, feel free to write me if I'm wrong, that when I did my research, no one out there is a son who lost their mother due to Parkinson's who published a book. And that's frightening. Because I would like more competition because I'm not here for that. I want everyone. So, uh, you know, it's just uh, something we have to keep fighting and keep working. And I always think that I want my children to continue together with Sharon. And I hope they don't have to because I hope by then we have a cure. Well, and I think it's really deeply important what you're doing, George. And thank you again for coming to my table and bringing this awareness to the table. Because you know what? Without you, George, we wouldn't have a voice for a man. We wouldn't have that uh, that son story. And there might be sons out there that are just too scared to come forward and say my mom passed from Parkinson's because they were unaware and uneducated as well. Until you live it, you can't speak it, right? Uh, so let's get some male stories out there. If any of uh, you males are listening out there and you, you've experienced the loss of your mom or your father from Parkinson's, reach out to George and see how you guys can connect. Uh, reach out to George on his podcast as well. Check out his book. Check out his website. Uh, grab a bracelet. You know, make a donation. Check out what fundraisers are there uh, and support your local communities that are doing events for Parkinson's so that we can get the word of mouth out there. Uh, and again, George, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story. It, it was really a pleasure. Um, is there any final words you'd like to say before you scoot out? No, I'm not. I just wanted to point out behind you on the floor, there's something that I live by in the word H-O-P. That's it. We have to keep hoping. We have to keep hope alive. And all those still struggling, all those families, all those struggling Parkinson's and all the loved ones we've lost, you have to uh, keep hope that we can finally all together as a community and a family and this disease very soon. And I'm grateful again for your time and your audience. And again, this, uh, I cherish this talk. Again, it's not just a podcast to me. It's actually changing the world. And I want to, it has to be a continual conversation because even if they do pass the law to end Parkinson's, it's not going to mean it's going to be implemented probably. So we have a lot of work still to do. And I really appreciate your time again. Thank you. Well, I think, like you said, we still have a lot of work to do, right? And word of mouth goes really far. So sharing this tea time with somebody that it resonates with, sharing it with an organization that works for, for Parkinson's that we might not be aware of. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to George again, reach out to him on his website, www.togetherforsharon.com. Check out his link tree. You can find all his social media there. Uh, and check out his book. Again, A Son's Journey. I really hope for your, I hope, George, that your, your book gets put into a movie because I think it would make a real huge difference and impact for people to see this, see the story, uh, you know. And again, thank you for sharing your mom's story with us. And uh, keep keep pushing, keep throwing and keep trottling along. But don't forget to take care of you too as well, George, because without you, we, we can't do this. So take care of you as well. And I'm sending all my wish and my wishes and prayers to you and safe travels. And mm -hmm. again, uh, your your event that you're reaching out to this weekend, could you mention that before you before you leave, George? Yeah, it's the 30th anniversary for, uh, they used to have something called the Unity Walk and everybody gathers from around the world to the Central Park in New York City. And uh, I've never been. I just decided a spontaneous thing. We need to be part of this big one. It's the 30th. And unfortunately, due to COVID, it kind of crippled the organization. And thankfully, the Michael J. Fox Foundation picked it up and continuing it on. So it's this Saturday at about, I think, 8 or 9 a.m. just for till 1 or 2. And we come back. But I'm just excited. I'll take a lot of video, share it on all the social media. Not sure if Mr. Fox will be there, but he might be. And 
Uh, and it's always a pleasure to be representing. I love their quote. It's uh, they're going to be there for, until Parkinson's is not. It's the same thing I live by every day. So thank you all again. Well, thank you so much, George. And we will be back at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with returning guests from season four, uh, Charles Britt and Brakefield and Rox Berkeley. She'll, they'll be here with the Ig IGNA series and we'll be talking about their two latest new books. So until then, I will see everybody at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and everyone keep spilling your tea and let's make a difference one cup of tea at a time. <laughs>